Uh, good evening. Uh, this is my second class in Nexus Medical School, and today's topic has been chosen: cirrhosis of liver. You know, cirrhosis of liver is a very um, important cause of morbidity and as well as mortality throughout the world and also in our country. And many people throughout the um, suffers from cirrhosis of liver. It hampers the daily activities and most of the patients when the cirrhosis of liver becomes decompensated, uh, their survival grossly reduces. So today we'll discuss about cirrhosis of liver and also this is important because in your final professional examination, there may be cases, um, there may be long case, and um, among the cirrhosis of liver could be one of the important uh, case. Among onyxia patient may have ascites, and you know ascites has got different, uh, multiple differential diagnosis, and cirrhosis of liver is one of the important differential diagnosis of ascites. So cirrhosis of liver is very important in many aspects. So let me share my screen. So, and I've been already introduced. I'm working as a suite professor department of hepatology in Shoitsara the Medical College Hospital. Okay. So first slide is an overview of cirrhosis of liver. Cirrhosis is the final common histologic pathway for a wide variety of chronic liver disease or chronic liver injury. And the term cirrhosis was first introduced by Linac in 1826. And the term cirrhosis has been derived from the Greek term cirrus. And this cirrus refers to orange or tawny surface of liver. And cirrhosis is the fourth most common cause of death in Europe and ninth leading, leading cause of death in the United States of America. This is also one of the important cause of uh, death in our country as well. Now, how can we define cirrhosis of liver? So cirrhosis of liver actually a histological term or diagnosis. You can define it as diffuse disorganization of normal hepatic structure by regenerative nodule that is surrounded by fibrotic tissue. And you know, cirrhosis is irreversible. So the uh, cirrhosis develops when there are chronic hepatitis in liver and this chronic hepatitis ultimately complicates to fibrosis and there are several stages of fibrosis and the last stage of fibrosis is known as cirrhosis. So fibrosis to some extent is reversible but cirrhosis when is irreversible. So when there is cirrhosis, what happens is there is progressive and widespread death of hepatocytes. And this is associated with inflammation and fibrosis. So whenever there is any chronic injury to the liver, it could be by virus, it could be by toxins, it could be by alcohol, or due to any autoimmune diseases, there is widespread inflammation occurs in the liver, which we call chronic hepatitis. And this chronic inflammation leads to deaths of hepatocytes in uh, to mildly, moderately, or severely. In most of the cases, it occurs for a long time in mild to moderate severity. And so ultimately what happens is that liver, because it has got enormous capacity of regeneration, liver in response to the damage to hepatocytes, liver, the survival of the living hepatocytes, which are intact, they regenerate and produces many hepatocytes. And these regenerating hepatocytes, and also due to accumulation of fibrous tissue, that ultimately develops multiple numerous nodules inside the liver. And as a result, what happens is three changes occur in the liver. Number one is loss of normal hepatic architecture. Number two is loss of normal hepatic vasculature. And number three, formation of regenerating nodules. So these three are the hallmark pathological changes in cirrhosis of liver. 
and fibrosis is not synonymous with cirrhosis I have already mentioned. Now cirrhosis, as I have told you that this is a histological diagnosis, but sometimes you can uh, use cirrhosis in clinical aspects as well. But you know, there is a term chronic liver disease or CLD, which we mostly, we many often we use this term CLD or chronic liver disease. So what is chronic liver disease? So chronic liver disease is defined as liver injury occurring over more than six months in contrast to the acute liver injury. That is any injury inside liver, if it occurs in liver and extends to more than six months is known as chronic liver disease. So what do we mean by chronic liver disease? So in general, chronic liver disease actually incorporates or includes chronic hepatitis of any nature or of, from any etiology and also it encompasses compensated cirrhosis as well as decompensated cirrhosis. So any term can be used as chronic liver disease, but by chronic liver disease, we usually want to mean cirrhosis of liver. Now, what are the causes of cirrhosis of liver? So multiple causes have mentioned that um, any form of chronic hepatitis can lead to cirrhosis. So the etiology which can cause chronic hepatitis ultimately they are the etiology of cirrhosis also. So in this slide, you can see that the, the first cause of, although it has been mentioned here that alcohol, but this is the predominant cause of cirrhosis in Western countries actually. So in our country, the second common, second cause, which is mentioned here as chronic viral hepatitis B or chronic hepatitis C, this is actually the first predominant cause of cirrhosis in our country and also in many developing countries. Number three is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You know, fatty liver disease is a very a common disease nowadays. It's been the prevalence of fatty liver disease is gradually increasing in number in Western or developed countries and also in developing countries like ours. And number four causes, fourth cause is immune related diseases like primary sclerosing cholangitis or PSC, uh, autoimmune liver disease then biliary diseases like PVC or primary biliary cholangitis, secondary biliary cirrhosis due to obstructed jaundice, which persists for a long time, cystic fibrosis, you know, this is a genetic disease also. And in genetic hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, alpha antitrypsin deficiency. And some in some cases, we cannot find any etiology. And this is known as cryptogenic or idiopathic cirrhosis of liver. And the the prevalence of cryptogenic cirrhosis of liver is 15%. In the past, the percentage of cryptogenic cirrhosis was more than 30%. But as because we now have clear understanding of many diseases like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, therefore the percentage of cryptogenic has come down to 15% nowadays. And also chronic uh, venous outflow obstruction or any other chronic liver disease can actually lead to cirrhosis of liver. So in short, if you want to say that any chronic injury which involves the parenchyma of the liver can lead to cirrhosis. Also any chronic diseases which affect the biliary tree can lead to cirrhosis. And also any chronic diseases which involve the venous system of the liver and ultimately causes chronic venous outflow obstruction or congestion inside the liver can also lead to cirrhosis of liver. Now here you can see that the normal, a very beautiful uh, architecture of liver. You can see here that the, there we have got many hexagonal lobules, which are composed of different one or two plate thick hepatocytes and inside the hepatocyte wall there is sinusoids and at the one corner there are central vein and in another corner there is portal triads having portal vein or hepatic artery and bile duct. So this is a normal hepatic structure and, and you get in this slide in this picture you can see that the space of DC which contains stellate cell this is a very important location of liver where the stellate cell or I2 cell resides. And this stellate cell actually is responsible for the generalized fibrosis and which ultimately lead to cirrhosis of liver. Therefore, you have to have gross idea about this 
histological structure of liver. And now what is the ET pathogenesis or how cirrhosis actually occurs in liver? So you can see that whenever there is chronic injury to the liver, you know that there is injured hepatocytes. So the injured hepatocytes ultimately releases different cytokines or mediators. And also as there is chronic inflammation in liver, the Kupfer cell, which is the macrophage, which resides in liver, sinusoids, is known as Kupfer cell. That Kupfer cell also gets activated. So, and also platelet also get activated. So all these three cells ultimately releases different mediators, which activate the stellar cell located in the uh, space of DC. And when this stellate cell is get activated, this stellate cell actually in turn, they releases again different mediators like transforming growth factor beta, um, PDEGF, different interleukins. So ultimately they causes excess fibrous tissue formation in the liver, chemotaxis, has upon restriction of the portal venous system and many other changes occurs, uh, which ultimately lead, lead to fibrogenesis and regenerative nodule formation. And ultimately cause cirrhosis of liver. So here you can see a picture, histological microscopic view of normal liver, then bridging fibrosis. You can see that the different fibrosis which occurs in bridging pattern from portal triads to portal triad. And when this bridging fibrosis increases in number and ultimately cirrhosis develops when there is nodule formation surrounded by different fibrous tissue and inside the hepatocytes, regenerating hepatocytes uh, are located. So grossly, mm, the, the cirrhosis can be of two types, macronodular cirrhosis and micronodular cirrhosis. Now, what is the outcome of cirrhosis of liver? So there are three, <clears throat> two gross outcome of cirrhosis of liver. Number one is hepatic insufficiency as because of generalized hepatocyte destruction. I mean, number two is portal hypertension. So why portal hypertension develops as because there is alteration of the normal hepatic vasculature. The sinusoids inside the liver get compressed the portal veins, veins get compressed by the formation of the different nodules. So ultimately the portal pressure inside the liver increases, which ultimately give rise to portal hypertension. So this is in short about the pathology and the pathogenesis of cirrhosis of liver. Now, what are the clinical features of cirrhosis of liver? So cirrhosis of liver, is actually clinically of two types. One is compensated cirrhosis and another is decompensated cirrhosis. Compensated cirrhosis means the, there is cirrhosis, but the liver can still maintain the normal function of the liver. This is known as compensated cirrhosis. And decompensated cirrhosis means liver can no longer maintain the, its full function. Therefore, different complications or different manifestations develop. Loss. That is decompensated cirrhosis. So when a patient is compensated cirrhosis, he could be completely asymptomatic. And most of the cases, so how these patients of uh, compens having compensated cirrhosis are actually diagnosed? They're actually diagnosed incidentally by when they go for different investigations like ultrasonogram or liver function tests. And sometimes during surgery, particularly laparoscopic surgery, when the surgeon can see the outer surface of the liver, which is of nodular, rough, irregular margin, so they can have an idea that the liver is cirrhotic, although the patient didn't have any fluid manifestation of uh, cirrhosis. So patient could be entirely asymptomatic, and sometimes patient can present to us with some different non-specific symptoms like weakness, fatigue, muscle cramps, weight loss, or muscle wasting, which is also known as sarcopenia, anorexia, nausea, upper abdominal discomfort, and low-grade fever. So these symptoms, you know, are non-specific. These symptoms could be present in different other diseases. So these are, therefore, these are called non-specific symptoms. 
And when there is decompensation, patients with cirrhosis can present to us with symptoms of complication. And in fact, in most of the patients in our country comes with symptoms of complication like abdominal distension or leg swelling, that is ascites, leg edema. Patient can come to us with confusion, disorientation or full unconsciousness or coma, which actually indicates that patient has got hepatic encephalopathy, hematemesis or melina, which indicates there is very shell bleeding, nasal bleeding or epistaxis, which occurs due to coagulopathy, and loss of libido, amenorrhea, and multiple endocrine changes patient could have when there is cross hepatic function impairment. <clears throat> and also, if you go for physical examination of a patient with cirrhosis, you could have different signs if we examine the patient meticulously. So what are those signs? It's very important. Whenever you uh, examine a patient, keeping in mind that patient could be cirrhosis, you must keep in mind that patient could have many signs if you examine the patient properly. So due to different circulatory, circulatory changes in cirrhosis, you can have spider nevi or spider, spider telangiectasia or spider angioma, palmar erythema and in advanced stage cyanosis. Different endocrine changes like hair loss, particularly in male, we have patients come with loss of axillary hair and also hair loss in other secondary sexual characteristic area. That is loss of male hair distribution. Patient could have, male patient can have gynecomasia, testicular atrophy, testis becomes soft and smaller in size and pain insensitive, which you call testicular atrophy. And this is a very important sign of cirrhosis of liver. Women can come with breast atrophy. And also patient could have bruises, purpura or epistaxis due to hemorrhagic tendency. Patient can have signs of portal hypertension like splenomegaly. This is a very important clinical sign of cirrhosis of liver. Spleen gets enlarged. So it's splenomegaly, different collateral vessels over the abdomen, fetal hepaticus, which is a very characteristic finding of decomposition cirrhosis of patient. That is the patient's smell or breath has got a characteristic smell, which is uh, sometimes a bit Swedish, and also some says that there is um, some uh, slightly fecal smell of, into the breath, and this occurs due to the due to having acetone or ketones in the alveolar area of the cirrhotic patients. And patient can have ascites. This is very important. You know how to examine ascites. Flanks gets full. There is shifting dullness, and in if it is huge in amount, we can get. Uh, fluid still even. Patient can have jaundice, but you know, jaundice is not a very early feature of cirrhosis of liver. You must keep it in mind. Jaundice usually you get in cirrhotic patient when it is very much advanced stage. And hepatomegaly, we can have hepatomegaly in alcoholic liver cirrhosis, hemochromatosis, and sometimes in NASH or fatty liver related cirrhosis. But the cirrhosis, which is very common in our country, is chronic viral hepatitis related cirrhosis where liver actually gets shrunken. And so liver no longer is palpable. Liver rather becomes very smaller in size. So hepatomegaly is only, it occurs in early stage of cirrhosis and in alcoholic or hemochromatosis in early or even in advanced stage. And some other signs like pigmentation, clubbing, leukonychia, that is whitening of the nail and dupitrans contracture, we can also get in a patient with cirrhosis of liver. Here you can see that the uh, hepatic face is this uh, very beautiful spider navy. And these are also called spider telangiectasia. And you must know how to identify this spider navy and what is their usual location. They, these spider navy are usually found above the nipple level. So they can be, and they are usually found in the distribution area of the superior vena cava. That is, it could be found more common in face, neck, chest, or also in the back, and sometimes on the dorsum of the hands and the forearms, they are very common. And this is spider navy, in healthy person, one or two spider navy could be found, but in the cirrhotic patients, they're found in 
um, numerous in number. And sometimes also it could be um, the, some spider nevi could be found in pregnant lady, particularly in third trimester of pregnancy. And a patient with ascites, and also you can see the palma dilatum. This is also a stigma of chronic liver disease, that is, the palms become dilatumatous, particularly the thinner eminence and the hypothenar eminence, and also the palps of the finger. So if you grossly divide or categorize these clinical features of cirrhosis of liver, here we can see that ultimately these features fall in three categories. Number one is features of hepatic insufficiency. Number two, features of portal hypertension. And number three, features of both hepatic insufficiency and portal hypertension. So what are the features of hepatic insufficiency? That is the bruises. Echemosis, parbura, epistaxis, leg edema. You know, these occurs due to the deficiency of the clotting factors, albumin, and also other different endocrine and circulatory changes and jaundice. So these are due to the hepatic insufficiency. And for features of portal hypertension, we get splenomegaly, collateral vessels, variceal bleeding, fetal hepatic cancer, etc. And the uh, ascites and hepatic encephalopathy, which are two most common symptoms or complications of cirrhosis of liver and their ascites and hepatic encephalopathy, but they actually occurs due to both the, uh, for their pathogenesis or development, contribution from both hepatic insufficiency and portal hypertension is important. So they are actually occurs due to the both hepatic insufficiency and also due to portal hypertension. <clears throat> And this slide is for how ascites is developed in a patient with cirrhosis. I'm not going for details. We can take another class on ascites when we can discuss the pathophysiology of ascites in details. But in short, in cirrhosis of patient due to portal hypertension, there is a splanchnic arterial vasodilatation, which ultimately causes a reduction in the effective arterial volume in the central circulatory system, which causes activation of the renin angiotensin system. And therefore, the, there is fluid and salt retention, which, actually, which ultimately lead to ascites. <clears throat> now, what are the complications of cirrhosis? So when patients have decompensation, actually they can, if have ascites, Ascites could be complicated with spontaneous bacterial peritonitis or SBP. And ascitic patients also could complicate to hepatorenal syndrome or HRS. <coughs> also refractory ascites. That is the ascites which doesn't respond to the diuretics. Variceal bleeding, hepatic encephalopathy, hepatopulmonary syndrome, and hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma is also a deadly complication of cirrhosis of liver, and it has got very poor prognosis when hepatocellular carcinoma develops on the top of cirrhosis. <coughs> so clinical classification of cirrhosis, I have mentioned already that compensated cirrhosis and decompensated cirrhosis. Decompensated cirrhosis is also known as chronic liver failure. <laughs> And you may be asked in exam, then when we call a cirrhotic patient decompensated cirrhosis. So if one or more of the following develops, then we call it decompensated cirrhosis. That is ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, pericial bleeding, or increase in jaundice. So if either ascites or hepatic encephalopathy or pericial bleeding or increasing jaundice develops in the patient with cirrhosis, we call it decompensated cirrhosis or chronic liver failure. Now, how to diagnose cirrhosis of liver? So for any disease, history, meticulous history taking, physical examination and some investigations, these are the three tools by which you diagnose a disease. So this is not different in cirrhosis of liver as well. So in history, we'll ask the patient history suggestive of ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, or variceal bleeding, that is vomiting of blood or passage of black tar is stool in past or in recent days. History, 
And next, we'll try to take history to rule out other differential diagnosis of ascites, like extra exertional dyspnea, chest pain, altered bowel habit, weight loss, history of tuberculosis, et cetera. So this is very important. So whenever a patient is given in long case or comes to us in our daily practice, he has got ascites in some stigma of chronic liver diseases, and we are suspecting it to be a case of cirrhosis, but still we need to exclude other differential diagnosis from history by asking patient about exceptional dyspnea to rule out congestive cardiac failure or heart failure, chest pain, again to rule out cardiac cause, altered bowel habit to rule out protein losing enteropathy or any malignant diseases which could lead to ascites, weight loss, which is important, which occurs in any malignant disease and history of tuberculosis or evening rise of temperature to rule out tubercular peritonitis. And to rule out and to assess what is the probable cause of cirrhosis, we need to ask patient about history of blood transfusion or surgery, tooth extraction in the past, family history of cirrhosis of liver, liver cancer, whether the patient has got known chronic hepatitis B or chronic hepatitis C infection. People who inject drug, that is drug, IV drug abuse are very important because they're very much prone to have chronic hepatitis B or C. Patient having long history of diabetes, mellitus, fatty liver, history of alcohol intake for a long time, to rule out alcoholic cirrhosis, any autoimmune disease because autoimmune there are many autoimmune disease connective tissue disorders and patient having one autoimmune disease can have other autoimmune disease like autoimmune hepatitis, which can ultimately lead to cirrhosis of liver. Drug disease is very important because many drugs are there, which if taken for a long time can lead to chronic hepatitis and ultimately cirrhosis. And also joint pain, new onset of diabetes mellitus. This is very important because a male patient of 40 to 45 years having joint pain, arthritis, and new onset of diabetes mellitus with skin color change, that is hyperpigmentation of the skin, you must think of it, it could be due to hemochromatosis. So this is important. Now, what are the stigma of chronic liver disease? So I have already mentioned some of the stigma of chronic liver disease. So what do we mean by stigma of chronic liver disease? So it means that there are some clinical signs or features which could be present in chronic liver disease or cirrhosis of liver. But you must keep it in mind that presence of this stigma of signs does not necessarily mean that the patient is having cirrhosis of liver because these signs or features could be present in other diseases as well. But as because these are commonly found, so these are known as stigma of chronic liver disease. So what are those? The spider telinjectia, gynecomasia, palmar erythema, dupitrans contracture, leukonychia, clubbing, testicular atrophy, parotid swelling, caput medicine. So whenever we get one or two of these stigmata in a patient having ascites, so our clinical diagnosis, clinically, it becomes very easier that this patient could be a patient of cirrhosis of liver. Therefore, searching or looking for a stigma of chronic liver disease in a patient is very important clinically. Hepatic phases, this is also a very clinical sign. A patient with advanced cirrhosis could have shrunken eyes, hollow temporal fossa due to cross muscle wasting, pinched up nose and malar prominences, muddy complexion of the skin, and sometimes icteric change of conjunctiva mildly icterus may be found in icterus. So, so all these features when present is the, it is usually called hepatic phases. So I've mentioned about why, how you should take a history, how to examine and what are the things you should look for clinically. And next come to the investigation, what you need to do to confirm a patient having cirrhosis of liver. So, First, we go for some laboratory tests like complete blood count, liver function test, bilirubin, liver enzymes, albumin, prothrombin time, etc. So, in 
complete blood count can give us important clue. But in compensated cirrhosis or in early stage cirrhosis, complete blood count could be unremarkable. That is completely normal. But in advanced case, patient could have anemia, which is usually normocytic, normochromic, but there could be, anemia can be microcytic, hypochromic, chromic, due to chronic blood loss from different mucosal changes as occurred in a patient with cirrhosis of liver, and also due to recurrent variceal bleeding. And sometimes anemia could also be hemolytic, and hemolytic anemia at a cirrhosis patient is common for the patient to get the patient. It is also the patient with Wilson's disease related cirrhosis. Because Wilson's disease, what happens is excess copper accumulation in different tissues. And all, you know, excess copper can be accumulated in red blood cell as well, which causes breakdown of RBC, leading to hemolytic anemia. And platelet is commonly reduced in cirrhosis due to splenomegaly or hypersplenism. WBC usually are normal, but they also could be low. So due to use splenomegaly or marked portal hypertension in a patient with cirrhosis, that could be monocytopenia, that is thrombocytopenia, that could be bicytopenia, even that could be pancytopenia. That is all the three cell lines could be reduced in number. And bilirubin, it could be normal in most of the cases, but it is raised when there is advanced cirrhosis leading to jaundice. Transaminases in a patient with cirrhosis are usually normal. In chronic hepatitis, it could be raised, but when there is cirrhosis, cirrhosis, frank cirrhosis, transaminases usually uh, are normal in blood, but they could be mildly or moderately elevated in some time. Albumin and prothrombin time is very important because they actually indicate the synthetic function of the liver. So albumin is most of the cases it is low or reduced in concentration. And prothrombin time in early stage, it could be normal, but in most of the cases it is prolonged. So prolonged prothrombin time can occur in cirrhosis of liver. And also, you know, it can occur in obstructive jaundice. So in cirrhosis of liver, it occurs due to impaired formation or reduced formation of the clotting factors. Therefore, prolonged prothrombin time in, but the cause of prolonged prothrombin time in obstructive jaundice is different. There, due to obstructive jaundice, bile cannot enter into the intestine. And therefore, the fat soluble vitamins, that is vitamin K, cannot be absorbed in sufficient amount in our body. And due to lack of vitamin K, there is prolonged prothrombin time. You know, vitamin K is important for activation of the clotting factors. So we can differentiate it by giving injection vitamin K to a cirrhotic, to a patient with prolonged prothrombin time. If it gets corrected, it is due to obstructive jaundice or obstructive biliary tree. And if it doesn't correct, it means that there is impaired hepatic function, which could be due to cirrhosis of liver. Then we go for laboratory tests or serological tests to find out the etiology of the cirrhosis of liver. So what are those tests? In our current perspective, we initially we try to find out the whether the patient, the cirrhosis is due to any viral cause, that is chronic viral hepatitis B or chronic hepatitis C. These are the two important virus. The predominant virus is chronic hepatitis B because this, is, this virus is very much prevalent in our country than chronic hepatitis C. And so hepatitis B surface antigen or SBSAG, then NTACV to rule out hepatitis C. Then we go for some liver autoantibodies to rule out autoimmune cause anti-nuclear antibody, smooth muscle antibody, anti-mitochondrial antibody, ferritin to rule out hemochromatosis, ceruloplasmin to rule out Wilson's disease. And sometimes as fatty liver is getting a, gradually becoming a common cause of cirrhosis, we go for different imaging studies and other relevant studies to rule out fatty liver. So here also you can see that 
the investigations, the first line investigations, second line investigations, like investigations to rule out different etiology of cirrhosis of liver. Imaging is a very important diagnostic tool for cirrhosis of liver. Ultrasonogram is a very chief investigation and is easily found or available everywhere. So ultrasonogram can give an idea about cirrhosis. So what are the ultrasound findings in a patient with cirrhosis? Here you can see that the, the homogeneous parenchyma in a normal person, healthy person, but in case of cirrhosis, you can see that the, the margin is irregular or nodular, the parenchyma is nodular, codes, and also different hypo, hypo echoic nodules we can see. And also there is ascites, gross ascites. So in ultrasound, we can see nodular liver surface, irregular age, codes, parenchyma, in small size liver, detection of splenomegaly, ascites, and different, and a good ultra, sound machine and sonolo sonologist can detect also portosystemic collaterals, dilated portosystemic veins. CT imaging, CT scan of the hepatobiliary system is very important diagnostic tool of cirrhosis of liver. Sometimes when we cannot confidently diagnose cirrhosis by other mode or other tools, we take help of CT imaging. So here you can see that the, the total size of the liver has been grossly reduced. The margin is irregular in CT imaging, but also there is hypodense that is around the liver that is ascites. The spleen is also enlarged. So many characteristic features of cirrhosis is seen in this CT imaging. So it's very helpful. And then we go for endoscopy test, upper GI endoscopy. So upper GI endoscopy, it's very important to find out the evidence of portal hypertension in a patient with cirrhosis. Number one is esophageal varices. You can see that, that the, the dilated, tortuous, bluish veins at the lower part of the esophagus in upper GI endoscopy. So this is called esophageal varices, multiple column, and these varices when get ruptured, lead to catastrophic bleeding, hematemesis and melina, which can sometimes could be fatal and can even take the life of the patient. And also another feature of endoscopic finding is portal, portal hypertensive gastropathy or PSG. You can see the mucosa of the stomach is mosaic-like pattern. This is characteristic findings of portal hypertensive gastropathy. And also you can get varices in the fundus of the stomach in upper G endoscopy. So you must know all these three features. And upper G endoscopy is a very important diagnostic tool in a patient with cirrhosis to find out the evidence of portal hypertension. So when a patient comes with cirrhosis ascites and we advise endoscopy, get these signs, get these features as varices or PSG in a patient with ascites. So you can confidently say that this patient is having cirrhosis of liver. And liver biopsy is a gold standard test for diagnosis of cirrhosis. But because, you know, this biopsy is an invasive procedure. And sometimes patient, most of the patients comes to us in decompensated states. Liver biopsy is not a safe and uh, safe diagnostic tool for those patients. So therefore, we diagnose cirrhosis of liver by other modalities of tools, as I have mentioned so far. But liver biopsy sometimes becomes very much important and essential to diagnose cirrhosis of patient when there is vast confusion about the diagnosis. So we then go for the liver biopsy. And liver biopsy, if you go do the histopathology, we can see different stages of fibrosis, F1, F2, F3, and F4 fibrosis is called cirrhosis of liver. And there are also some contraindications when we cannot go for advice liver biopsy. You can see that the uh, if prothrombin time is very much prolonged, if platelet count is more, less than 80,000 and there is gross ascites, then we cannot go for liver biopsy. So there are also some non-invasive markers of hepatic fibrosis, but these are not commonly asked or need to know 
from your part, but uh, you must know about the fibrous scan. This is a very important modality of treatment nowadays is used also in our country. This is a test like ultrasonograph, but this fibrous scan uses vibration control transient elastography. That is a shock wave is passed through the liver parenchyma and the a reading or value comes in the monitor, which indicates the liver stiffness. So the more the value, the more the liver is stiff or fibrosed, which indicate the patient is whether it is a level of fibrosis and whether it has completely cirrhotic liver. So fibro scan, you should have some idea of fibro scan. SAG. So what is SAG? SAG means serum ascites albumin gradient. So this also helps in diagnosis in cirrhosis, particularly if patient comes with ascites. So what is SAG? So SAG is serum albumin minus ascitic fluid albumin. So blood I am going to help you measure it. Among ascitic fluid, I am going to know different study. Cytology, biochemistry. Second, I am going to protein change. I am going to do albumin. I am going to do it. So serum albumin, which is today, which is today, which is ascitic albumin minus. I am going to say value that is more than one point one. Hoy that indicates that this ascitis is due to portal hypertension. But if this sag is value is less than one point one, this indicates that this Ascites is due to non-portal hypertension, so non-portal hypertension could cause be uh, cardiac failure, congestive cardiac failure, um, peritoneal yeah, tubercular peritoneal uh, ascites, malignant ascites. So there are many causes of non-portal hypertensive ascites. Now come to the management. So how we manage a patient of cirrhosis of liver? So as you know that whenever a patient develops cirrhosis, it is actually irreversible. And you know, um, there has been many research to discover a effective antifibrotic drug, which you can give to these patients and which could effectively reduce the fibrosis. So such drugs is still under trial and has not yet been available to use in patients with having fibrosis or cirrhosis. So when a patient develops cirrhosis, our treatment plan, what are our treatment aims and objectives and how we manage these patients, this is very important. So general management of compensated cirrhosis of patients. So you know, a patient with compensated cirrhosis do not have ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, any coagulopathy or any jaundice. So he is diagnosed to have compensated cirrhosis by biochemical or in or by imaging tools, but he can maintain his normal function or daily activities. But in these patients, we should um, ask the patient to avoid alcohol. He's if he's alcoholic, we should ask the patient to avoid obesity because you know obesity could lead to fatty liver disease, which can deteriorate the condition of the patient. Withdrawal of harmful drugs and toxins. If a patient is on a drug which is causing fibrosis and has led to the cirrhosis, we should we must withdraw the drug or toxins. Maintenance of an adequate balanced diet is very important. Prevention of variceal hemorrhage is important. So though patient is compensated cirrhosis, but patient could have portal hypertension that can lead to formation of the esophageal varices or varices in different other sites. So we must, if patient has got varices of medium or large size, we should give some medications that reduces the portal hypertension. So what are these drugs is non-selective beta blocker, which is propranolol. But this propranolol has got a very important use in patient with cirrhosis to reduce portal hypertension. And also another aim of uh, is early detection of hypertensional carcinoma. You know, cirrhosis is a very fertile land for development of hepatocellular carcinoma. And once hepatocellular carcinoma develops, you know, its prognosis is very bad, particularly if it is in advanced stage or size becomes larger, significantly larger. But if it is detect, it could be detected earlier when the size of the tumor is very small, we can ask the patient to go for surgery, you can dissect the tumor 
and can cure the patient from hepatocellular carcinoma. Therefore, one of the strategy or aim of us in patients with cirrhosis is to survive, is to keep the patient on regular surveillance so that we can detect any hepatocellular carcinoma if it is detected at early stage. So what we do for that is we ask the patient for doing alpha fetoprotein, a tumor marker and ultrasound of the liver at six months interval. This is very important. Now, what is the general management of decompensated cirrhosis? That is patient having ascites and gabalopathy, general management. General management avoidance of precipitating factors and early treatment. So there are some precipitating factors which can make the status of the hepatic function ores and can lead to decompensation of cirrhosis. So like infection, any sort of infection in body can lead to decompensation of cirrhosis. Sepsis, injurious use of medication, hypotension, constipation, dizzy electrolytemia due to vomiting, diarrhea, and any surgery. Like a patient with compensation cirrhosis, if you go for surgery, that could lead to decompensated cirrhosis. So, <clears throat> Careful fact of so avoidance of these specific factors. I mean, either one of conditions with the decade, I'll do the shit at treatment good of it. Jamon infection or judo treatment good of it. Shock, holy shock and management with the constipation to avoid good of it. Surgery do the essential nourishment to avoid good of it. You look about the rector. Number two is ascites, then treatment of ascites. If there is hepatic encephalopathy, treatment of hepatic encephalopathy, treatment and prevention of variceal bleeding. So, I mean, what is compensated prevention with the variceal bleeding? Decompensation series is under variceal arrow borrow his jai. I'm borrowing Joto borrow with the rapture of Shambhavana. Variceal bleeding. She's in another echano non selective bitter broker use good to have. I'm also, you can also treat these patients by esophageal band ligation or EVL, esophageal variceal. Ligation. This is important. Janta hobe. Amra endoscopy madhu me ekdo ne rubber band bhari zula the kodi di. Abo onushu me teeth skorta hoy. Transesophageal, um, intra hepatic portosystemic shunt. Ita ke bolle teeth. Jeta onushu me korte hoy. Treatment of complications like ascites ase jodi spontaneous bacterial peritonitis hoy. Hepatoral syndrome, double shavular shade of treatment could have early detection of ACC, echano important, shagano surveillance could have by alpha beta protein and ultrasonogram. Then is specific management. So, what is the specific management of serious patient? So, number one is treatment of the underlying cause. So, if there is, we can identify a cause of the cirrhosis, then we must treat it. And if an identifiable cause is found, prognosis of these patients are better than those when no cause could be identified. So if the, we can see, find that the cirrhosis due to chronic hepatitis B infection, we start antiviral treatment for, against hepatitis B. If it is due to chronic hepatitis C, we start antiviral treatment against hepatitis C. If it is Wilson's disease, then we give drugs which reduces copper concentration or excretes copper more from our body like penicillamine, trientine, zinc, Hemochromatosis, iron load berejai. So, you know, I'm at regular intervals, Benny section could a blood fill it. So, then blood on Shamra day, in the kitchen kitchen disease, I can resist to show me for blood fill it. That's the iron number I should do. This is the main modality of treatment in hemochromatosis. Primary biliary cholangitis will also do cirrhosis. Do I alcoholic cirrhosis will alcohol abstinence could have one sham like a steroid bar or other medications. Use code attacking. So these are the treatment of the underlying cause. But I show most underlying treatment for our polio on a patient camera improve code to vaina, go back to improve for a jana or improve holio. Ultimately, patients gradually at some point of time, patients' condition deteriorates when no drug actually can relieve his ascites, can or patient starts to having recurrent hepatic encephalopathy and many other complications and his daily life activities becomes grossly hampered. So then the only option is liver transplantation. 
So liver transplantation is the only curative treatment for cirrhosis of liver. It is a very important liver transplantation is a very important Liver transplantation is a very important benefit on a very Patient life expectancy on a very 70 to 80% patients, 70% patients survive more than five years. Among 10 years survival price, 65, 50 to 60% 10 years survival after liver transplantation. So, yeah, there's some of them, I want to see liver transplantation is journal. One of the good item now, it's a kitchen who successful, it's a kitchen failure, it's a but routinely I can watch now, but we are hopeful that in future liver transplantation will be a routine procedure or surgery in our country. And another modality of treatment is stem cell therapy. So stem cell therapy is a newer treatment option for series of liver, but this is not still a recommended treatment. This stem cell therapy is still in investigational therapy. With even on this yet any trial or check is you can benefit power of child the show. Umbra stem cell therapy pro coaching. I mean, particularly um, Professor Mahon Al Mata of Jindabangu Medical University Hepatology Department Chairman. I am like a team Kachkuri, a patient, a cirrhosis patient, liver transplant, or the parchana by the gay. So there can break stem cell therapy. The other key umbra pro curia, and which you get from a best efficacy patchy benefit patchy. So, what are the bad prognostic signs of a patient with cirrhosis? So, increasing jaundice, ascites, hepatic encephalopathy, it's a bad prognostic sign. Among lab is the high bilirubin, high, low albumin, high, mild hyponatremia, sodium level on a comija, prolonged posomidum, it's a so bad prognostic sign. What is the prognosis? So, overall prognosis in a patient with cirrhosis is poor. Only 25% patients survive five years from diagnosis. But when there is liver function is good, 50% patient can survive five years, 25% survive 10 years. And when the patient is often ascites developed, 50% patient die within two years of time. Now, how can we assess the prognosis? So there are some scoring system. One is child PO classification or child target PO classification, CTP score. It is the grossly jantovi can chatta. Parameter D, a score to correct a much hepatic encephalopathy. Number two, serum bilirubin level. Number three, serum albumin. Egg do it in your pass pasta. Then a clinical hoche encephalopathy and ascites. Among laboratory, hoche bilirubin, albumin, and protrumbin type. A pasta parameter D, amra dako can a non mild mark hole, one point, two point, three point, above amra classification for Davidson, Ache, the Hindu Paro. Above regular judi amra scoring kuri judi deki j. Less than seven point, the letter will child A class. If it is seven to nine, it will child B. I mean, if it is more than nine, it is called child C. So, Joto child C, Hobe, Yahobe, score barbe, Toto, their prognosis is bad. And my art scoring system is a doki chuta janta, it will male score or model for end stage liver disease. A male score actually. It a PTV Western Canticular Jugulate cadaveric liver the liver transplant corahoi. Monijor for patient the cadaver take a liver near a preserved carbon shebulo jara, cirrhosis of liver jara, Nigo waiting list at Hakatara, ye pele, that they get a transplant corrupt. It's a shaman shakaniki kikore, shakanecta, you know, United Network for Organ Sharing at a shamsase, Jaganora list and am Rakahoi. এবং সেখানে তাহলে কাদেরকে একটা ক্যাডভার যদি ডোনার পাওয়া যায় লিভার পাওয়া যায় কাকে দিবে সেগুলোকে যাতে ইউনিফর্মলি প্রায়োরিটাইজ করতে পারে সে কারণে মেল স্কোরটা আবিষ্কার হয়েছে এবং এটা আবিষ্কার করার এটা তিনটা প্যারামিটার দিয়ে করা হয় ইন কন্ট্রাস্ট টু দা সিটিপি স্কোর হিয়ার বিলিরুবিন আয়নার এন্ড ক্রিয়েটিনিন এই তিনটা এবং কিছু কিছু কাছে সোডিয়ামটাকে অ্যাড করা এটাকে বলে মেল সোডিয়াম সেটা না জানলে হবে বাট মেল স্কোরে বিলিরিয়াম বিলিরুবিন আয়নার এন্ড ক্রিয়েটিনিন এই তিনটা দিয়ে अब ये डे सिक्स टू फोर्टी स्कोर होते पड़े, जहाँ स्कूल जो तो बाढ़ बे ताकि तो तो आगे वेटिंग लिस्ट आगे नहीं आशा हो जनों डोनर पहले ही ताकि आगे ट्रांसप्लांट कर जाए, अब ये मेल स्कोर तो थ्री मंथ सर्वाइवल एक टाइम भालू प्रोग्नोसिस तक इंडिकेट करे, सो अब हम मेल स्कोर की बात कैलकुलेशन करते हैं what is cirrhosis? What is the etiology? How can I diagnose? 
and how can you manage? But you know, cirrhosis of liver, the other dish of specs as a SID, portal hypertension, hepatitis, cephalopathy, varicial bleeding, regular management of our altitude the details, both the jay, should they shall push on Shambhopna, Shagila Hoda Poro Tifi Judi Kohonda, Alachana Shujukai, the Kam Jana Hobe. So, so far, this is all about cirrhosis of liver. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Aslam Alikum. Walaikum Asalam. Sir, it's a question. Hmm. Sir, uh, cirrhosis of liver, and the Kun Kun Dragula avoided Draki, Jeta Hoche, uh, Etakaro aggravated Kurbe, Mane Dragula. Ah, the Legulu, the actor Hoche Jamon Methotrexate. Methotrexate actor Jab Drag, Jet a long time is called fibrosis. So, Kichu anti tubercular drag at him. Jagulo, pyrogenomide, defamacin, egulo on shimo, and a gag rivet could the body. He to sedative narcotics as Jagula actually liver liver in Hotoka, you could be like in the liver at Jamon cirrhosis is complication even hepatic and several with the PCVT could the body. Among cirrhosis, only the majority of hepatic function the Kumaja. Most of the drugs we take for different other reasons, they ultimately are metabolized in our liver. So when liver function is grossly impaired, Ambrak into regular dose reduction could be the high. I'm using a dose reduction, I could be done into Bishiba Koshudik into side effects on him. In the Kishi common drug, Jagula Vulam, MTX, anti tubercular drugs, anti convulsion drugs, Tarpore, sedatives, narcotics, singular could be avoided. Could have a having anesthetes also very important. Current anesthetes, Judiamra, use could be Shagula Dagaji kidney function grossly impaired. That can lead to renal failure even. So, a jagulo use color paper on the gate, careful with rabbi. Patient, at a patient, cirrhosis of liver diagnosis, heart port. I'm a patient that came on a daily follow up at Junuki key point Gulam Ramatayaki. Cirrhosis patient, Jacob, what you put your diagnosis or put to Judy to Marcus and Ashton with a daily dekti Barbara. Dale, but Judy hospital at a patient put the high. Even as it is near Botilu and Cavalvas in Botilu, Jetany, or the asset is in Bishop Botilu, the Lama the daily Jedadicto with the armor, the asset is secretary, asset is Takum Chikina. Shekatrama the daily weight tani, daily weight measurement. I'm the dietics is Kochi, Sheta about the target which is put it in zero point five kg is Bishish and Nakome, among the other zero point five kg Gurukome. So the number daily weight management measurement to later. Aside is Komchiki number on Shuma abdominal gut measurement to look separate Komchikina. This is important. Number two is the sleeping pattern, Shampo to Poshno Gutabi. Sleeping pattern Tatika Chikina, Karan, Karanja alteration of sleep rhythm is an early sign of hepatic encephalopathy or hepatic failure. Sheta Chikina, the Glamanj is the confusion, disorientation, regular Chikina, orientation, Tika Chikina, Shagula Amra on Shuki number connection test today. Jacob number connection just volable the umbra early minimal hepatic and gold. The notion of gross hepatic and cell with the agio early stage in minimally acic in a sheet umbra was just a good. Egulambra, the other muscle wasting hot chicken, the nutrition and check of the hot chicken, negative dick dog. I'm a patient get salt reduction cookable, Janusha extra gono salt naga. You will comply and hot chicken a shell of jisco. And salt to the access umbra kai. I'll look into patient security patient tell that food detention of it. I can much diabetes the ascites common in Shirakumbina. The urine output in this is very important. Urine output the diabetes this is also important. Can constipation can precipitate hepatic and cell pathy. Because the nutrition tip photo. Maintain of chicken. Amar onshimoy, which you miss your thake on protein restriction in cirrhotic patient. It could be a gachum bolo, but this is wrong. Botuan bologi, back to patient care, wish you protein shop down a cover kit over on protein, take a protein in 1.2 to 1.5 gram per kg daily protein in dick cut away. Even had a hepatic and several petty hoigolo, agibolo, wishumoy at least protein restriction called Korajuno. But I can let us switch an Oshimo Quebec a protein restriction got a project. Current protein restriction could be like a muscle wasting on a bridge. Patient a immunocompromised hover problem with the Arab bridge. Carefully patient a survival benefit on a comedy. So this is all about which you should look for during follow up of a patient with cirrhosis of liver. Thank you, sir.
স্যার আপাতত আর কোনো কোশ্চেন নেই আজকের ক্লাসটা অনেক সুন্দর ছিল অনেক ইনফরমেটিভ ছিল তার জন্য ধন্যবাদ আচ্ছা আপনাকেও ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ